Hi, this is Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com, and in this video I'm going to explore the relationship between the speed and radius of an electric charge moving in a magnetic field. So in this problem, we're given two charges that have the same charge and the same mass and the trajectories as shown. So Q1 starts at the top left, it goes straight, and then once it actually reaches the region with the magnetic field, then it curves down and emerges at the bottom right and then goes straight down after it leaves the magnetic field. Q2 starts off to the left in the middle and it goes straight until it reaches the magnetic field and then it curves around and emerges going leftwards at the bottom left of the magnetic field. The question is which charge has greater speed? So the first time I looked at this, I thought I would like to just use my intuition and my understanding of physics. Unfortunately, intuition can be misleading. So I'll start with one theory. And the first theory is that they have the same mass, m1 is equal to m2, and q2 has a tighter turn, it has a smaller radius. And the tighter turn is usually associated with a higher acceleration. Then, since from Newton's second law we have f equals ma, that means that f2 must also be greater than f1. And, since the force here is just the magnetic force, so f is equal to qvb sine theta, and it's worth pointing out that in this case uh, theta would be 90 degrees, so sine theta goes, up, goes to 1. And that's just because the magnetic field B is into the page, whereas the velocity is in the plane of the page. And so they're always perpendicular to each other. Since F2 is greater than 1, and since F is just QVB sine theta, then I would say V2 must be greater than V1. All right, so you're probably guessing I wrote theory number one on there. Here's another theory. The particle with greater speed will also have greater momentum and will resist a change in velocity more. As a quick reminder, from conservation of momentum, we get mv1 plus the external impulse, which is the external force times delta t, is equal to mv2. If I isolate the impulse by subtracting mv1 from both sides, then I can simplify the right-hand side, and I can see that it's actually m times v2 minus v1, which is really just m times delta v. Basically, the particle with greater speed will also have greater momentum. And from conservation of momentum, we know that a change in delta phi requires a force applied over time. Therefore, the external force, which in this case is the magnetic force, will take more time to change the velocity. And at a higher speed, this will be observed as a larger turning radius. Therefore, V1 must be greater than V2. So then the question I'm asking you is, which theory is correct? In the magnetic field, B, charges exhibit uniform circular motion in the plane perpendicular to B. And if you remember from mechanics, in UCM, the centripetal acceleration, which was towards the center, was equal to the speed squared divided by the radius. Here, the force causing uniform circular motion is the magnetic force, Fb is equal to QVB sine of theta, where theta is 90 degrees, so sine of theta becomes 1. From Newton's second law, we have the net force is equal to mass times acceleration, and I can work in terms of the force magnitude and the magnitude of acceleration because the f this is the only force that is acting and the direction centripetal just means towards the center of the turn, so I don't have to worry about x and y axes here. So I substitute in, the net force is just Fb, so I can write QVB, and then sine of 90 degrees gives 1, so I'll just substitute that in, is equal to the mass times the acceleration, the centripetal acceleration. So I substitute in V squared over R. The question, the original question, was to figure out which particle had greater speed. So then I want to isolate the speed, V. Now I notice that there's a v on the left and a v squared on the right, so I can cancel out the squared, which cancels out the one on the left, and that gives me q times b is equal to mv over r. So if I want to isolate v, I just multiply by r and divide by m. So I get v is equal to qbr 
over m. And I can write that really explicitly if I wanted to as q times b over m as a constant because both charges have the same charge, q. Both charges are in the same magnetic field, b. Both charges have the same mass, m. So qb over m is a constant, and that doesn't change for the two charges. What does change is the radius, r. So v, in this case, is actually proportional to the radius. Therefore, with q1 equals q2, m1 equals m2, and b1 equals b2, because again, they're in the same field, the particle with the higher radius must have the higher speed. Therefore, q1 has greater speed, and v1 is greater than v2. Okay, so what's the moral of the story here? We had two theories that both seemed kind of reasonable at face value, and I could imagine people arguing this uh, if you were so inclined. The moral of the story, in my opinion, is that physics can be counterintuitive, and one good strategy when you're not sure between two different options is to identify the relevant laws and use algebra to isolate what you're looking for, and then you can see clearly how it depends on the other variables. In this case, these two theories, they each one made sense, and they contradicted each other, and it turns out that one was one effect was stronger than the other. It wasn't until I substituted v squared over r for the centripetal acceleration that I could clearly identify which effect was stronger. And it turns out that in this case, the velocity is directly proportional to the radius, assuming that the charge and field strength and the mass are the same. I'm Scott Redmond, and I help students pass physics. I really hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, uh, please like it in YouTube to let me know.